Israel has now announced a retaliation list, including the highest leader of Hamas, Ismail Haniyeh, and Supreme Military Commander Mohammed Deif. Ismail Haniyeh has an interesting title, Chairman of the Hamas Politburo, which clearly bears the CCP's brand. Gaza is one of the most populous and poorest areas in the world, but many of Hamas's leaders are billionaires, and ordinary tycoons often own million-dollar villas in Gaza's villa areas. The main leaders of Hamas, including Haniyeh, live in luxury villas in Qatar. Like Haniyeh, most of the founders of Hamas were refugees or direct descendants of refugees, they made their fortunes through relatively simple means, such as donations from the deceased's family, charity funds called Zakara, in Arabic, and donations from many different countries. The first donations came from the governments of Syria and Saudi Arabia, then Iran, one of the major donors, and finally Qatar, which today has replaced Iran, the United Nations, the US, and Israel are also major donors to charitable foundations. According to the US State Department, Iran provided more than $100 million in annual aid to Gaza in 2020, as well as to Hamas and Islamic Jihad. As administrator of Gaza, Hamas also taxes goods, the tax brings it between $12 and $15 million each month, with the most taxed products being cigarettes, fuel and construction materials. In addition, Hamas also controls underground smuggling tunnels in Gaza, smuggling goods through tunnels generates hundreds of millions of dollars each year. Therefore, when the people of Gaza have nothing, Hamas, the leader of this terrorist organization, has mostly great fortunes. According to press reports, the first person to get rich was Musa Abu Marzuk, deputy commander of Hamas, who earned the first pot of gold by establishing a fund in the U.S. to raise money for Hamas. He was detained in the U.S. for two years for financing terrorist activities and was later deported. However, by this time, he was a wealthy man with a net worth of millions of dollars. Today, Marzuk's family assets are approximately $3 billion, making him one of the richest people in Hamas. Another former leader of Hamas, Khaled Mashal, was also born a refugee, through his lifelong struggle for the cause of the Palestinian people, his net worth in 2021 is about $5 billion, he has significant investments in many Arab banks and owns a large amount of real estate in rich Arab countries in the Gulf. Hamas Politburo chairman Haniyeh himself is said to be very poor, with only $4 million, but his family's assets are up to $4 billion. Haniyeh was born in a refugee camp in Gaza in 1962, in 1987, he entered the Islamic University of Gaza to study Arabic literature and became an activist in the student movement, here, he joined Hamas. He participated in the First Intifada and was sentenced to a short prison term by an Israeli military court, in 1988, he was arrested again by Israel and imprisoned for six months, in 1989, he was sentenced to three years in prison, after his release in 1992, he was deported to Lebanon and became world famous thanks to a British BBC report. A year later, he returned to Gaza and was appointed Dean of the Islamic University. In 1997, after Israel released Hamas founder Yassin, Haniyeh was appointed Chief of Staff. Due to his relationship with Yassin, he became increasingly popular within Hamas and was appointed as a representative of the Palestinian Authority. Above is the revolutionary path of Haniyeh, the supreme leader of Hamas. When he became a proletarian revolutionary of the previous generation, he became extremely powerful and possessed a huge fortune, so this time, he could stay in his luxury mansion in Qatar and admire the terrible devastation from Hamas's surprise attack. Were top military commanders trained in China? The military commander of the attack was Muhammad Deif, the name means, guest, in Arabic, and it is said that he often moves around hiding in other people's homes for safety. His original name was Muhammad Diab Ibrahim al Masri. This person acts mysteriously, and only a few photos have been published. He has never given interviews to the media, and in nearly 30 years of not appearing in public, very few people have seen his true face. The Israeli intelligence agency Mossad also has no recent photos of him. Muhammad Deef's voice appeared in a video released on October 7, hours after the attack a rare terrorist incident in the past 50 years that left thousands dead. As a critical top military commander of Hamas, Mohammed Deif designed Hamas's signature weapons, the Qassam missiles, and Gaza's network of underground operating tunnels, 
in 1996, he was responsible for the bus bombings in Jerusalem and Ashkelon, killing about 50 civilians and becoming the most wanted criminal. Where did Mohammed Deef's military capabilities come from? Is it Iran? It is not. On October 11, Yen Limeng, who revealed the COVID-19 CCP virus epidemic, said that Mohammed Deef studied at Shijiazhuang Military Technical Command School in mainland China. The school is affiliated with the CCP's Military Equipment and Development Bureau and was named the Military Technical College in 1986. He also said the Hamas phone number can be connected directly to Xi Jinping's office. According to political analyst Qin Peng, the above information is very reliable since the CCP is one of the masterminds behind Hamas, the CCP is eager to try anything that can cause trouble for the US because its goal is the so-called abolition of private property, naturally, it has a special hatred for the US, the world's most developed. The Chinese government has always been against the West. Hawaii-based analyst Carl Schuster, a former U.S. Navy captain, said that China's Middle East policy is built on its policy of opposing the West, especially its policy towards the U.S. Since the establishment of the government, the Chinese regime has always been a force with opposite policies toward the West. Just when the West was punishing Iran for developing nuclear weapons, in February 2023, Xi Jinping welcomed Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi in Beijing and expressed support for Iran leaders of the two countries attended the signing event of 20 cooperation agreements on trade, tourism, and other areas, they also agreed to strengthen cooperation in other fields such as oil and gas, industry, etc. Last month, the Chinese government welcomed Syrian President Bashar Assad with high protocol for a head of state, it declared that the establishment of a strategic partnership between China and Syria would become an important milestone in the history of bilateral relations. The United Nations Security Council has accused the Syrian government of crimes, including extrajudicial killings, torture, arbitrary detention, sexual violence, indiscriminate attacks, looting and destruction of property, as well as the use of chemical weapons. In March 2017, the United Nations Security Council drafted a resolution to impose sanctions on the Assad regime. On October 7, Hamas fired thousands of rockets into Israel and carried out massacres in villages killing thousands of Israelis and citizens of many countries, faced with the bloodiest attack in 50 years, the Israeli army launched a fierce counterattack against Hamas. But in their news reports, Chinese state media often emphasize Israel's bombing of Gaza rather than Hamas's terrorist attacks. The CCP's media even accused Washington of a so-called malicious interference in the Middle East. According to Schuster, the Chinese government has moved closer to the Palestinian position, they called for a ceasefire, but they no longer pretend to be neutral, they use the war to condemn and blame the US for this conflict, their bias is happening faster than Schuster expected, China is using the Palestinian issue as a tool to fight the West, especially America. China wants to separate Saudi Arabia and Egypt from the US, and it sees supporting Palestine as a ploy to achieve this goal. In the past, successive leaders of China frequently contacted Arafat, the leader of the previous generation Palestinian terrorist organization, PLO, Zhou Enlai even directly instructed him to try their best in propaganda work and united the front through deception. The Chinese government also specially invited Palestinian personnel to China for training. The CCP has also trained leaders of other terrorist organizations, among them was bin Laden, leader of Al-Qaeda and mastermind of the 9-11 attacks. In the 1970s, Bin Laden engaged in training at the 112th Division, 38th Army of the People's Liberation Army, at that time, he went to China to study with Afghan guerrillas, and his instructor was Gao Peipu at school number 11, one of the remaining four people in the photo later became one of the leaders of the Taliban in Afghanistan. For China, these trainings are free, and the trainers get paid, just like now, hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash were given to black students each year. However, China does not operate at a loss, it is making a long-term political investment, exporting the revolution abroad and expanding its sphere of influence into developing countries worldwide. Data shows that since 1957, the CCP has trained tens of thousands of high-ranking command officers from more than 100 countries around the world, of which the Nanjing Military Command School alone has trained five presidents, one vice-president, 
and more than 100 defense ministers, armed generals, commanders, chiefs of staff and other high-ranking generals. Of course, the CCP itself will not admit this, especially when the crimes committed by Hamas shock the world and the anger of righteous people around the world become stronger, but can the truth stay hidden forever, let's wait and see. Don't forget to comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us, make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from Understand China, and thank you for tuning in.